Welcome to how to build a cymatic voice box. You're going to learn how to build a cymatic voice box in order to make patterns just like you see here on the screen. So the first thing you will need is a wooden box, latex material, an amp, some duct tape, an electric drill, a skill saw, some safety goggles, an extension cord, a pencil, and a mic. All right, the first thing you're going to do is order latex. And latex is essentially the same kind of thing that balloons are made out of, except you can get large sheets of it, um, 36 inches wide or even wider, to use for your cymatics projects, including this box. And here's a link that you can go to that essentially gives you a lot of different places to get latex from. Latex is usually used in clothing. Um, so you can use this link to look for the places that make latex that are closest to where you live. A lot of them are in Europe, but there are a couple in the US and Canada. As you can see here, there are all different colors of latex that you can get, um, just about infinite amount of colors and um, also thicknesses. Um, on the thicknesses, I would just get something that is about the thickness of a balloon or maybe thinner. Don't go for the thicker latex because I think the, thick, the thicker it is, the less it will respond to the sound waves. So go ahead and just pick a color and keep in mind what type of powder you're going to be using on it. Um, I just picked red for this example, but you can pick black or any other color. Um, if you're going to be using white salt, then keep that in mind when you pick your color. All right, so next you want to borrow or buy an amp. And the reason that I say borrow or buy is that um, amps can run you some money and you might just want to borrow one or, or use one that you have if you happen to have one before you go out and invest money in an amp. Start by borrowing an amp and then if uh, you like how it works, you can always go out and purchase one. Now I just went out and purchased one myself because I knew that I was going to use it over and over again and this is the one that I purchased. Um, and this is a keyboard amp which is a little more responsive to sound and making the patterns than a guitar amp would be, although you could use a guitar amp. Also a voice amp um, would work really well as well, but the keyboard amp is what I had available. So next we're going to find or make a wooden box. Now I say find because I just found a wooden box uh, that I had on hand. It was um, an art cube. Uh, as you can see here, uh, it's just a simple cube um, with uh, bottom, no top, and uh, any kind of box like this will work that you can find that's wooden. Um, if you can't find a box like this and you want or need to make one, then here are some simple instructions for making a box. Um, what you want to do is just either get cut or cut yourself uh, four square panels uh, out of plywood or hardboard or particle board or any kind of uh, an, a sturdy board like that. Um, mine happens to be made of about half inch uh, plywood, but you can use other materials as well. Um, you're going to make four panels that are all the same size and as you can see in the diagram you can just put them together so that the corners overlap and they're offset going around kind of in a circle um, each corner is offset to go meet up with the next and you also want to cut four pieces of two by two or one by one, um, whatever's available to you, and um, just cut it so that it's slightly shorter than the sides of your box. Uh, 
and you're going to use sheetrock screws to screw in the corners of your box into the um, from the outside into the braces on the inside as you see here. Um, you don't need to put a bottom on your box if you're making one. Actually having a box without a bottom will be handier as it will allow you to um, alter the alter your sound or get into your box easier than if you have to take the latex top off which is what I do with my box since I just found one and it already happened to have a bottom in it um, and I have the uh, safety glasses there just a reminder to use those alright so next we're going to cut your latex sheet to size. Hopefully your latex has arrived in the mail by now and it is exactly what you were hoping for. Um, when you when I say cut your latex sheet to size what I mean is uh, you're going to first get your amp and then you're going to build your box so that your amp can fit inside of it of course you want to make sure that your amp is going to fit easily inside the box and that you can reach in and fiddle with the controls and alter the sound on your amp while it's inside the box. And then that's going to tell you how large your box is. And that's going to tell you, uh, again, how large your latex should be. So you're going to take your latex sheet and lay it on the floor and draw around it on, on the bottom side, whatever side you're using for the bottom. Draw around it um, on the edge of your box top so that you can see how much room you need to leave. You need to leave at least three inches of space extra around the top of the box so that your latex can go down over the top of the box and get taped down as you'll see in uh, in our next step. So once you um, have drawn around the edge of your box and you have your, your latex out here. Now I don't have a line here because I already know it's the right size. Um, I'm just trimming the edge a bit here so you can see uh, cutting the latex with the scissors. It's pretty easy just evening up the edge a bit here and once you have your latex uh, cut to the right size then you want to actually set it aside and we're going on to the next step after that so step five is make a hole in the side of the box and what you're going to do that for is so that all your um, cords and electronic can come out of the side of the box uh, and that way your box will be perfectly level when it's sitting on the floor. So um, what I've done here is I've made an X so that I can see where the center of the box side is and I'm using my salt box actually to draw a circle that I'm going to use for my pattern. And then you want to take a drill and uh, I've got about an eighth inch um, bit in my drill here. Basically, you're just drilling a hole so that your blade of your skill saw will fit in it. So check the blade of your skill saw, see what size of hole you need to drill. And you're going to uh, put on your safety, safety goggles, just like I did. And now you're going to drill a hole right in the center of the side of your box. So next, we're going to take our skill saw and safety goggles once again, and you're going to start, if you haven't cut anything with a skill saw before, you're going to start by um, putting your blade down into the hole that you made in the side of the box. As you can see, sometimes easier said than done. And then, so that's used as a starting point, and that way you can curve around and um, go into cutting your circle without having any uh, rough 
rough spot where you start. So don't start on the edge of your circle, start in the middle and saw out from there in order to get a nice uh, circle cut from the box. And one thing to note is that, you know, it really doesn't matter if this circle is perfect. Uh, it's just a way to get your wires out through the box, and I want it to look fairly nice, so um, if you end up having some flaws or the circle that you cut isn't perfect, no worries, just go on to the next step and it will be fine. Alright, so the next step is we're going to put the amp into the box. Fairly self-explanatory, but um, you want to set the amp down inside the box. As, as you can see, mine just fits in the box, but the your box could be much larger if you wanted it to be. This just happens to be the size that I had. Uh, once you get it in there, then you're going to take the and feed it out through the hole in the side of the box and uh, yeah then the next step is we're going to connect your mic or computer so you can use a mic to sing into or make sounds into in order to make your cymatic patterns if you would rather use a computer or other electronic device or plug in an instrument, what have you, um, you can do that as well. I'm just using a mic in this example, but um, anything that you can plug into an amp uh, will work. So then as you see, I put the wire out through the hole as well. So step eight is testing your sound, and this is important, especially if you happen to have a bottom on your box like I do here. Um, you really want to uh, test your sound before you put your latex on and get your amp turned on and get it all working. And as you see, I have a, um, a power bar here that everything is plugged into, and that makes it so that I can um, turn the amp on and off with the power bar instead of having to take the latex off and reach in and turn everything on and off from the inside. So now you're going to put your latex over the top of your box. So it's all set up. I've tested the sound. Uh, it sounds good. I think it's going to work and um, you want to take your latex and yes put it uh, top side up not bottom side up. And now we're going to tape the latex onto the top of the box. And I'm using white duct tape here. You can use other kinds of tape if you'd like, but I like duct tape and I like white because, uh, you know, it works with my art studio. Um, what you're going to do is you're taping the latex down in the same way that a painter will fasten uh, a canvas onto a stretcher. So you're going to do the first the first tack there on one side, and then as you see, I'm pulling it straight onto the other side and actually creating a dimple in the middle as I'm stretching it just a bit. It doesn't have to be super tight, and you probably don't want it to be super tight, um, as that will put too much pressure on the latex, but you want to stretch it about the amount that you see me doing here. And after you get the first two pieces on opposite one another you go to the other side of the box and you stretch it and as you can see the two um, the two stretch marks there on the corners are fairly uniform and that kind of tells you if you're doing it the right way um, so once you get the four pieces on all four sides right in the center and you've stretched it then you're going to go around and in between the center and the corner you do the next stretch and the next tack and then you're going to go again 
uh, once you have this done on both sides here you're going to go to the other side and do it on that opposite side of the box in the same way and like I say this is the same way that you stretch a canvas uh, and staple it onto a canvas stretcher so now you're taping the opposite side and this will help you get a nice even stretch all the way around and have the surface have a good even tension uh, for making your designs so that it will be nice and clean and not sloppy and your salt won't end up um, pooling in various parts of your latex on the top. So now once you've done the right hand side then you're going to go over and do the left and the last thing that will be left is the corners and I'll show you that in a moment. In the meantime as you're watching the rest of this I'll note that after I tack the latex like this then I take my tape and I go around the edge of the um, latex horizontally and cover up all the little um, pieces of tape that are tacking it down so that it makes it look nice and smooth and clean and you'll see that in the next video but I don't show you a video of me doing that because it takes a long time and it would be pretty boring for you to watch the whole thing so that's what I do after these uh, pieces are tacked down so now you're going to do the corners and the way that you do them is pull them out and wrap them around kind of like you're folding a bed sheet or as they used to fold bed sheets and tape the corner on like that and you're going to do the other one nice and tight make sure there's no wrinkles on top uh, in the latex as you're doing this and then you'll do the other two corners and then as you see here I went around the edges with the tape to make it look nice and clean so now is the fun part you get to put salt on top and sing into your box I just use regular old table salt as you can see here I've used other things as well alum uh, powder glass different things like that um, but for simplicity and to get some nice patterns um, using table salt really just works the best I would start with that and then you can experiment if you would like after that so put a nice even coat on as I've done there not too much and uh, do a voice test and see how it goes sing higher sing lower sing loud don't be embarrassed to go ahead and make some noise and uh, make some beautiful designs so now we're going to go on to our bonus step um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to back up a little bit and uh, show you with the camera how I'm filming all this so that you can see my setup uh, that cloth that white cloth in the back is a photographer's drop cloth I you could also just use a sheet if you wanted to improvise and it's curved so that there are no shadows and as you can see I'm using a flip video here they don't make them anymore unfortunately but any kind of simple uh, digital camera will work on a tripod I've got art lights um, these are actually um, photographers lights but you can also just use uh, art and clamp lights on tripods if you want to improvise again and as you see here I'm filming it from the side so that I can show you the whole image of the box being made but if you would like to just film your images from the top just take your tripod with your camera on it point the camera straight down and put it directly over your image and film it from the top and using the lights and the backdrop in this way will give you a nice even um, spread of light and a really good image on film. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed your cymatic voice box tutorial and 
Now you can just play around with your box, make sounds, and see what happens. As I say, you can also hook a computer up or other electronic device, um, an instrument. Sometimes I used an iPhone to make designs, and you can make your own cymatic patterns. So um, that's about it. Uh, the next thing that you can do is, once you've made some patterns, be sure to go become a member at the School of Cymatics at schoolofcymatics.com and you can create a page there and upload videos and photos and share all your work with the other members. There's over 400 members there working in Cymatics today. You can also get your free subscription to the Journal of Cymatics if you haven't already at cymatica.com. Be sure to do that and you will get Cymatics news and you can also write in on the comments about your project and ask me any questions you have. Um, I always love to answer questions and um, get feedback on the Journal of Cymatics. And last but not least, what's your next project? Well, if you haven't made a cymatic bow and plate yet. This is purely acoustic, no electronics required. Uh, you can get full instructions for how to make a cymatic plate and bow set at cymaticplate.com. Thank you again for watching and I hope I'll see your designs over at the School of Cymatics.